It looked like business as usual at the co-op on the high street today, but it wasn't, because the co-op group has announced its worst ever figures, a £2.5 billion loss for last year. We've just reported the worst year in the co-op's 150-year history, and what caused that was an, an implosion at the bank. There are now real concerns over the survival of the co-op group. The bulk of last year's losses came from the bank, £2.1 billion. It all adds up to alarming news for the co-op's 90,000 employees and the 8 million co-op members. It was the arrest of Paul Flowers, the former chairman of the co-op bank on drugs offences, which exposed the chaos at the group. He had risen up through the group's unusual structure, where bosses are elected by members, but they may not have enough business experience. The new man in charge says the co-op can no longer rely on the goodwill of members and customers. We don't expect them to support us just because of nostalgia. We expect them to support us because we're really good at what we do. We're up against world-class competitors and we have to have a management team that can operate every bit as effectively as those very good competitors. The co-op is what's called a mutual. Profits go back to members rather than shareholders. Some have called it old-fashioned, but the model has some powerful supporters. There are many of us who believe that mutual ownership, uh, companies owned by their members or their workers, have a, a valid role to play. It's important we don't just have one type of company, but we have choice. But analysts believe the co-op must radically change the way it's run if it is to survive. There has to be a small team of experienced professional executives that run it. It can no longer be run by unwieldy committees of poorly informed, financially illiterate people. In less than a month, co-op members will have to vote on a brand new structure. It could be the most important moment in the group's 150-year history.